forever. Dog! I used to think that this was my town. What a stupid thing to think. I hear you biting off a brain now. I myself am on the brain. I used to want to be a real man. What's up, freebies? What's means. up, Diamond Dogs? What's now up, Athletic Gerbils? Guess what? It's Three Swings with Rhea Butcher, and I am the titular Rhea Butcher. Titular is such a funny word. You understand why. I don't need to go into it. Uh, I hope everybody had a great holiday. Uh, Mine was very chill. I didn't play a lot of baseball. I haven't played baseball in a minute. I have gone to the batting cages, but I haven't thrown a ball in a minute. That's not true. I actually had some uh, fun practice, and we did some BP, and I did hit the ball pretty good. So feeling good about that. Feeling good, you know, just feeling good. Had a relaxing holiday, didn't do a lot. Stayed in Los Angeles. Shout out to everybody who didn't do a lot over the holidays. I think that's what they're for. But if you also did a lot and that was what you wanted to do, great job. You're winning already. Happy 2019. This is the first episode of 2019. I'm excited for baseball season to start again so that I want to do this podcast. It's very hard to do- to want to talk about arbitration and all that stuff. I don't get into it. Um, I'm curious where these players are going to end up. We're still, you know, Machado and Harper are the uh, Otani of 2019. Um, I'm curious about it. I feel bad that Machado's, you know, sort of stock went down. I feel a lot of ways about it. My guest later on the episode and I briefly talk about it. Um, I do think he's probably getting a harder way to go because he's a player of color. I would assume so, but I gotta be honest, like it's hard to want to pick up a guy who didn't seem to give a shit in the world series. I just, it's tough. You put, you, you put, um, yourself in a bad position when you don't hustle it out in the, in the, the thing everybody is, wants to buy you to help them get, you know what I mean? Um, and saying by you is a really weird phrase. So sorry about that. Um, also just a thing that I didn't get into on Twitter because I just like, I didn't want the shit from the MAGA crowd. I just didn't want it. But, uh, Trevor Bauer did some stupid, terrible shit on Twitter. Um, I didn't even get into all of it cause I'm trying to take care of my mental and emotional state. Um, and was harassing and bullying this woman um and then uh, you know making the inference that he identifies as a different age and you know we have to have empathy for that now and so i retract any amount of uh understanding i tried to have for that guy like i you know i really do think that we in certain cases if somebody's not being blatantly racist or homophobic transphobic all of these things but is a Trump supporter, whatever, in, in these situations, you know, my, I base this on not like, oh, I want to reach across the aisle, but also like, as white people, maybe we do have to be the ones that like, talk to these other shitty white people. I don't expect people of color to do all that work. I based it mostly on the fact that I saw him on uh, MLB Network, like talking about how great Yasiel Puig is, and sort of like going against that old boys club, uh, which is like, you know, uh, dog whistle racism in, in baseball of saying like you know when when a a player of color has like bravado or excitement for the game or you know doesn't keep their head down or basically act invisible that they're bad for the game and blah 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 and uh, you know Trevor Bauer was going against that and I thought oh that's something that's something to to say like well this is good I mean for a, a MAGA player to say something like that is in the context of baseball specifically a positive, right? And it still is. It's just that he's a terrible person. Um, And in the context of Twitter and being, you know, a professional athlete and needing to conduct yourself in a particular way, um, setting the specifics even aside, like you shouldn't be harassing people on Twitter, even if they are, annoying you i mean sometimes i am not a professional athlete he has way more followers than me whatever way more people know who trevor bauer is than Rhea butcher but sometimes if somebody's like snarky to me like i'll say something back but i 
I don't, you know, I don't harass them. And also there's not like a mob of people behind me waiting to like attack somebody as there is with like MAGA because, you know, A, there's a t shit ton of bots that like work off of specific keywords. And then also people that follow those kinds of people love to do that. That's like what they use Twitter for. So anyway, I just think that dude sucks and I hope that he doesn't get traded to LA because I, I mean, I just, I won't, I literally won't have a team left after that. <laughs> I mean, I'm already considering just like not, yeah, I mean, I, I like, I like living in the city that I live in and then being like a part of this, of rooting for this team, even though they're, they're pretty terrible <laughs> and they break my heart, which I guess means you're a fan. Um, you know, in some ways, like I'd be grateful, I guess I could maybe start to get back onto Cleveland because they got rid of the logo, but they still have the name and all that complication. I guess that would be nice. I could feel, feel a little less terrible cheering for that team, but, um, I would be pretty bummed that I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel good about the Dodgers anymore. Um, I think it, it, from a baseball standpoint, it'd be a good move, even better than Corey Kluber. But anyway, um, I just wanted to say that because I'm sure mm, few people, a, a handful of you are probably like, well, this is weird that Rhea hasn't said anything about this. Not that I sit and think about what people think about what I think all the time. I mean, it is why I have a podcast, so <laughs> that's kind of why I would say anything. But um, yeah, that sucked, and I think that's terrible, and um, you shouldn't do that. Um, so, you know, uh, there's also, there's so much, there's just so much gross stuff in baseball, and, uh, you know, Kyler Murray is going to go play football instead of baseball, and, uh, you know, that bums me out, not just because I love baseball, but because, you know, He's going to have a shorter career in football and probably get CTE. He probably already has it. And, you know, you probably don't get that in baseball. But baseball is not, I mean, again, I didn't really want to talk about arbitration and stuff. And I don't know all the language and I'm not going to say it right and blah, blah, blah. But, like, I think it's a nightmare. Jake Arrieta tweeted something to, like, the younger generation coming up, like, basically watch your ass. And I want to be like, don't vote Republican anymore, dude. You're part of the problem. Like, I don't want to see any of these guys get uh, exploited. Even Jake Arrieta, even the ones that I disagree disagree with or the ones that think who I am is not a real thing. <laughs> and they disagree with my lifestyle, you know? Like, he tweeted, uh, like, the day of the election, like, I'll help you pack Hollywood Beat It or whatever. It's like, dude, I voted for you to have more money. Like, I voted for you and unions to be protected. So whatever idiot <laughs> like you're the problem and I, I i honestly like i love baseball i want to see it come back i want to go watch baseball but like they should strike it's just ridiculous like you can't you, you and and people get mad because they're millionaires and they're getting paid all this money to play a game yeah i know they should be paid fairly just like women who play the game should be paid fairly nobody's arguing for every player to make a billion dollars but also why not people who don't do shit make billions of dollars. So, like, these people have, like, sacrificed their lives. They don't get to hang out with their families. They spend their best years playing this game, trying to win a championship for a city. They, A lot of them spend a lot of time donating their time and t to charity. They give their money away. Like, let's be real. They should be paid for that. And, and the thing... The... the the thing that you're arguing for is for billion dollar companies because these teams are not just teams anymore. They're not just like upstart progressive examples of like your local team. Like these are billion dollar corporations. The Cubs are awash in cash and they make it seem like they can't afford anybody. And the Yankees and the, the Dodgers, they make a billion dollars with like cable contracts and merchandising and all advertising and, and they're owned by a cable company like they make so much money so much money and then they they make taxpayers pay for their new stadiums they threaten to leave these are not the players that are doing these things the players should get health care and they should be paid what is to scale a living wage for what they're doing because they are literally donating their lives a lot of these guys T T terry francona can't even really walk half the time he has to get his knees drained because he was a major league catcher and yes i will stop myself 
oh, these problems, whatever, but it's still a problem. So I think they should be get, getting paid. And I also can feel like, yeah, I would p- play for nothing because I'm a, quote, woman, and I'm not allowed to play. So I, you can have both feelings about all of it, and you can want people to be paid fairly for their work. I think everybody should be paid fairly for their work, whether you're a Major League Baseball player or a Los Angeles public school teacher. It's, it's not fair. That's it. I don't even need to keep going into it. It's literally not fair. The Los Angeles School District has a $2 billion rainy day fund that they don't want to touch because they want to keep it for charter schools, which basically breaks all unions and, and, and is, it, it has been for years, for decades. And these teachers don't even, the pay raise isn't even the, the important part of it. They want nurses for their students more than one day a week. They want books. They want updated buildings. They want librarians. They want psychologists. They want less testing because they spend 90% of their day teaching kids answers to a test. That We're not creating citizens anymore. Anyway, I've gotten very far afield. I'm glad to be recording this podcast again. But I really, if if you aren't on the side of the players, I really ask you to to, to look into it and really think about it and set aside the the dollar amount and realize that we should all be siding with the worker and not the corporation. I mean these these owners, these companies are billion dollar companies. Like the Ricketts family is basically trying to be an oligarchy in this country and the the main dude, I don't care that the sister is gay and voted for Hillary. I don't give a shit. She's not the one in control. The ones in control are the the financial officers of the RNC. These are very powerful interests. So I'm curious to see where Manny Machado goes. Curious to see where Harper ends up. I personally think he's going to end up back with the Nationals. But if they both end up with Philly, then God damn it, MLB Network put me on there because I told you that these teams were going to go far. And nobody believed me. Nobody listened to the queer-ass lesbian in Los Angeles about the Athletics or the Philadelphia Phillies. But there I was talking about it. So maybe I just need like some makeover to make me look like a straight lady and then I can get on MLB Network. (laughs) So I'm really excited about this episode. Uh, Right after this, we're going to have friend of the show, bass buddy, Paul F. Tompkins on to talk about his favorite baseball movie and one of his favorite movies in general. The 1984 film, Robert Redford starring Vehicle, The Natural. What's up, 3Bs? What's up, Diamond Dogs? It's Rhea Butcher, your host. Also, Athletic Gerbils, didn't mean to leave you out. I just want to let you know that I've got some tour dates coming up this year. On January 17th, I'm at SF Sketch Fest. There are a few tickets left for that. Uh, The next night, on the 18th, I'm at the Balcony Club in Boise, Idaho. Same there. A few tickets left. I'm sold out in Portland on the 19th and on the 20th. I've got a late show with a few tickets left at the Croc in Seattle, Washington. The following week on the 24th of January, I'll be at the Tempe Improv in Arizona. And then the very next night on the 25th, I'll be in Tucson, Arizona at 191 Tool. So please come out to those shows. Saturday, February 16th, I'll be at the Frida Cinema in Santa Ana, California. I believe that is an LGBTQ event, so please come out for that. March 1st, which is a Friday, I'll be at Talia Hall in Chicago. And the very next night, I'll be at the Gramercy Theater in New York City, New York, on Saturday, March the 2nd. And then on Thursday, March the 7th, I'll be at the Vermont Comedy Club in Burlington, Vermont for a weekend. There are five shows to that. Please buy some tickets. And then Tuesday, March 19th, I'll be at the Amphibian Stage doing a quick little residency there from the 19th to the 23rd. That's in Fort Worth, Texas. Please let me know if there is a team I can see if they would even be playing at that point. It's very early. But please buy some tickets to those shows. I would love to see you. I'm going to have my Stay Tough, Stay Tender patch. Please bring five bucks if you can. I would really appreciate it. Please buy those. I just want to see them out in the world. They're a fun thing that I made. Uh, I want to keep making little things, so I want to see how these things go. Um, And also, I have a shirt out on Lockwood LA, which is one of my favorite companies. So please check that out on their Instagram and my Instagram. Thanks, 3Bs! 
All right, three bees, diamond dogs, athletic gerbils. Very exciting. We've got Paul F. Tompkins coming right up to discuss the natural. And I just want to let you all know, it is going to be, we're just going to openly talk about the movie. So if it's something you haven't seen yet and you don't want to know anything about it, watch it and then listen to the interview. Because there is going to be some spoilers for some stuff that, you know, you don't necessarily know about the movie if you haven't seen it yet. So, out of kindness, I want to let you know, if you don't want to be spoiled on The Natural, watch it first, then listen. So, without any further ado, here is Paul F. Tompkins and my review of The Natural. <laughs> Paul F. Tompkins, ah, ah. can you hear me? I can hear you. Can Great. you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. We just watched The Natural, which was your pick. That's right. For Wasn't baseball movies. Well, yeah, I asked you what baseball movies you like, and then you said this one and Eight Men Out, and I picked this one. True. For us to talk about. So it was both of our picks in a way. Both of our picks in a way, <laughs> but ultimately from your picks to begin with. Also, I wanted to ask you, you watched Bull Durham. Yes, I did after your <laughs> after your Bull Durham episode. How was that experience? You had um, seen it before? Like when it came out. Yeah. I don't think I've seen it since then. So like in the theater? Saw it when it came out or like I, on I home video? I think I saw it on home video when it, when mm -hmm. it came out on home video. And um, like my memory of the time was like it was a very sexy movie. <laughs> Just pure sex. <laughs> pure sex movie. And watching it again, there's a lot of stuff that is that really held up for me that is mm -hmm. still really great. And there's some stuff that's a little bit like, well, it's all right. That's fine. <laughs> like the wicker shoes. Like what? The wicker shoes. You know, they were <laughs> oh those my little. God. All the fashion <laughs> was something else. But the. The button-up short sleeve shirts are pretty fantastic in that movie. Yes. I would wear all of them, I think. Do you know what's funny is that it, it's like everyone's pants are pleated all <laughs> to hell, but it actually... It, Do you think that like, will ever come back? Well, I mean, it yeah, kind of, think, it kind of already back. is back, but I mean, that stuff comes, transcending yes, age in, like, the way, in that way. Things like things like pleats and, and how many buttons on a jacket come and go and, <laughs> yeah. you know, but I, nobody looked bad, though. No, no, no. Do you know no. what I mean? I do know what you mean. Everyone everyone looked good. It's not like you look at it and, and think, oh, everyone looks absurd. Like everyone <laughs> right. pulls it off. Yeah. You know? I mean, it definitely looks like 1988, but for sure, for sure, it doesn't feel. Yeah. Nobody's got like hair sprayed out teased hair or no. anything crazy no like that. it looks but, normal <laughs> it does look normal yeah but um i was struck by uh kevin costner is not as good as i remember him being Ooh, in this movie and interesting it's, it's and he for a guy who's playing like the 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 sort of seasoned mm -hmm. been around guy mm -hmm. um he's pretty stiff and wooden in a lot interesting. of interesting yeah i remembered him as being more charming than i found sure. him in this well, the, when yeah. I found, the, I remember him as being more charming than on the second viewing of Interesting. the movie. Interesting, hmm. like the whole that yeah. speech that he does. Right. It's like, wow! Imagine if somebody who was better at acting had done that <laughs> speech. Sure. But it's like it is yeah. that it's that movie star thing of that type of role is you, uh, you know, you can get by with with a lot more charisma than than acting. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you sure. don't necessarily need somebody who's a terrific actor. You need somebody who's charismatic. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was. And also surprising. looks good playing baseball. Yeah, he he's definitely believable as a baseball guy. Like if oh he, yeah, if I didn't know who Kevin Costner was, I would probably think oh he was an actual baseball player yep. who they got to play this <laughs> got part. to play this part. And he's not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, in that that I, and I don't think I ever. I've seen that movie so many times, and yeah. I don't think I ever realized exactly how crazy it is that in that batting cage scene with Susan Sarandon, when he just turns around and hits the ball one-handed yeah. after a line read, is like one of the mo the craziest things I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah, that's nuts. It's, that's insane. <laughs> that's, and that's crazy. You're you you clearly have seen this movie a lot. So many times. <laughs> I've I watched it a lot. Yeah. So many times, but I do like that about that movie is that it like opens up every time you see it. Yeah. So speaking of bad acting, <laughs> we we watch The Natural, and I say that not about Robert Redford or really anybody else. You were just talking about Barbara Hershey and what a great <laughs> silent era movie actor she would be. The mo the the scenes in the bar the Barbara Hershey scenes where she is just looking and observing and and calculating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are amazing yes it's a, it's a tiny role oh it's such a small part so small 
Um, but yeah, she is like her face is extremely watchable in those little scenes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looks great under a hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> this movie, this movie is uh, is one of my favorites. Yes, one of your favorite movies. Yeah, I'm not just say, baseball I'm movies. Say one of my favorite movies. Yeah, period. It's it's beautifully shot. Absolutely. Caleb Deschanel is the cinematographer. Mm-hmm. It is just it's a a a painting. You know, like oh, every sure. every shot really imaginative. A lot of the a lot of the ways a lot of the 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 scenes uh, the way they're shot, um, and you know, like the the. The use of backlighting and, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. You know? There's so much mood in this movie yeah. for, we were talking while we were watching it, how different this movie would be if it was made now. Yeah. Or even in the 90s or something, that it just would be like way snappy. I mean, it's a long movie. Yeah. It's two hours and 17 minutes, yeah. which to me isn't a long movie, but no, by today's it, standards, it's yeah. very long. And I, I feel like it really moves and I don't feel like there's, I mean, I... I I'm sure that someone could pick it apart and say, well, you could lift out this. This doesn't sure. need to be in there. But yep. to me, it's it's not I, I, I can't I'm not going to say any movie is perfect because <laughs> I, I even movies that I love are not perfect movies. But this is such a well-made, mm-hmm. well-made movie like it is worth your time. Oh, for sure. You know, yes. Like, no, everyone's everyone involved is trying to make a good thing, mm-hmm. you know. Absolutely. And it really shows. And the performances are all, well, you know. Babs Hershey doing her best. <laughs> She's doing her best. But I think the performances are all wonderful. Everybody in it is so great. The dude, I didn't look up anybody's names because I'm a professional, but the dude who's also in Thief, basically playing the same character that he plays in Thief, who's who's playing like the dude in the dark room. Um, oh, Robert Prosky. Yes, thank yes. you, Robert Prosky. Yeah, he's terrific. So great. Darren Gavin McGavin's in yes. it. He's terrific. Um, uh, Glenn uh, Close is great in it. Kim for, Basinger is great in it. First, I will say, Robert Redford you you take for i think we take for granted as like a movie star but yes. he's a really good actor oh yeah and he does there's so much there's so much room one of the things i love about this movie is there's so much room for people to do little things mm-hmm. in this movie there's an economy of there's an economy of language but at the same time we were talking yes. while we we're watching it there's like extra stuff in there that just had so much flavor like when um you know they ask uh uh you know, they're a batting practice and, and one of the players uh, says, hey, Roy, throw me one. I want to hit one more. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, nobody's seen him pitch at that point. But, uh, you know, so the the guy's in the box and he says, you know, throw me one more. And then another guy, you know, on the sideline says um, ten dollars. Uh, he throws it right past you. And <laughs> the, the batter says, you already owe me ten dollars. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't need to yeah. be in there. It doesn't need to be there at all. But it adds to the relationship of, yeah. and the dynamic of the team. Yeah. And like I would say that all the things you're talking about are exactly the way I feel about baseball in general. Yeah. All those like tiny little things in a game. And that is what I love about this movie is that and and Bull Durham is that it has those little interpersonal yeah. relationships. It adds like, so much yes. flavor. The the scene where it's a little tiny moment where uh, Richard Farnsworth and and Wilfred Brimley are sitting in the dugout during batting <laughs> practice, and they're they're do, essentially doing a name that tune. They're like whistling songs, and the other one has to guess what mm-hmm. the song is. And that that to me is is such a it's a great encapsulation of a uh, of a relationship of these two specific guys, yep, older guys who have known each other for a long time, and they they have a fondness for each other clearly you know Mm -hmm. and um you know they're having so they're having this little moment while you know batting practice is happening and it 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 inspired a friend and i this is years ago in philly Mm -hmm. he my friend had a dog and we would go out um and we lived i lived on the the floor above him and and we would go out um and walk his dog and we'd sit in this little park in philly while the dog like went all over the place just like sniffing around <laughs> sure. and stuff and we started this game and it absolutely for me was inspired by that moment in the natural mm-hmm. the game we would do was and i don't remember how we got into it it's not like we consciously started i god i wish i could remember how we started doing this <laughs> sure but it, it started as a it was a movie title game yep and we would just go back and forth first it was names that had movies that had numbers in the title that weren't sequels oh yes and so we just go back and forth naming one until somebody ran out Mm -hmm. then it was 
I think movies that had colors in the title. Then it was movies that had um, animals in the title. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember that. And these games, by the way, would last for days. Oh, of course, yes. for days. Whenever yeah. we would see each other, we'd start playing the game again. Yeah. Um, and the moment I vividly remember was uh, life was so much better before phones. Man, it in was some ways. Honestly, yeah, it's true. It really is. True. <laughs> I don't mean to be one of those people, but it's, it's true. like. I mean, you, thing, you had to come up with shit. Yeah, you had to come up with shit. You could still do that today. Totally. You know, but you probably would be less in, uh, inclined to. You yeah, know? right. Um, but I remember we were when we were on the animal ga- the animal round, I was really stuck. And it was like, I think I it, it, it would have been, been my turn for a couple days. Oh. And I came up with uh, Camelot. <laughs> and he said... <laughs> And he said, "You can't, you can't do that. That's like, that's like if I said giant. <laughs> I don't know. I buy it. Did you come well, up with another I one? I appreciate that. Sure, yeah. I appreciate that. But I, I accepted his his ruling. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like well, it's basically you made Doug loves movies before. <laughs> so that's true. You heard this it here a podcast. First on three swings that Paul F. Tompkins invented Doug Loves Movies. I should have mailed it to myself. (laughs) You should have mailed it to yourself. Doug, I'll see you in court. (laughs) (laughs) Have you been looking for a company that makes great clothes at a great price with good quality? I think you should check out Everlane. I got some really cool t-shirts with little pockets on them, you know, classic pocket tee, plus some Oxfords and a black jean jacket that I absolutely love. And I know... All of you think I look great, and I think I do too. So if you want to look like me, go to Everlane, because Everlane only makes premium essentials using the finest materials, and they don't have traditional markups. And they also tell you the real cost, so you know you're never overpaying, which is very nice. And Everlane wants you to know what you're paying for and why. They are radically transparent about every step in their process, from the materials they use to the ethical factories they work with. And because Everlane sells directly to you, their prices are 30 to 50% lower than traditional retailers. Everlane's clothes look better, cost less, and last longer. Essentials like their Cotton Crew t-shirt, which is what I was talking about just moments ago, are exactly what they should be. Simple, stylish, and made from quality materials. And right now, you can check out our personalized collection at everlane.com baseball. Plus, you'll get free shipping on your first order. That's everlane.com baseball. Everlane.com baseball. I am a stomach sleeper, a side sleeper, and sometimes a back sleeper. I toss and turn a lot is what I'm saying, and I end up sleeping on my stomach a lot. And recently, over the summer, which is when baseball season is, I got a Helix pillow, and it is the best pillow I've ever had. You can adjust it for how you sleep, and I have never had one that fits all of the ways that I sleep. It's actually perfect because... Guess what? There's nobody on the planet like you or me, so why would you buy a generic mattress built for everybody else? Same thing with the pillow. Helix Sleep built a sleep quiz that takes two minutes to complete, and they use the answers to match your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress. So, whether you're a side sleeper, hot sleeper, like a plush or firm bed, with Helix, there's no guessing or confusion. You can dial in the mattress to exactly what you need. So just go to helixsleep.com slash three swings, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. For couples, Helix can even split the mattress down the middle, providing individual support needs and feel preferences for each side. Plus, they have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. So right now, Helix is offering up to $125 off all mattress orders. Get up to $125 off at helixsleep.com slash three swings. That's helixsleep.com slash three swings for $125 off your mattress order. helixsleep.com slash three swings. I travel a lot for work. You know this about me. I go all over the country telling jokes, trying to make people laugh. So for years, I've been using lots of luggage. And just recently, I got myself an away carry-on. I really wanted one real bad. I finally got one and I was not disappointed. I've had Many types of luggage over the years, and I have to say that it is the best carry-on bag I have ever had. 
I can fit everything in there that I need. It looks great. It moves through the airport perfectly. It doesn't roll away from me. It goes in every direction. It's literally never fallen over. I absolutely love it 100%. A Waze approach is simple. They create objects that are designed to be resilient, resourceful, and essential to the way you travel today. They ask thousands of people how they pack, why they travel, and what bugs them the most about their luggage, and then they designed a bag that solved a few old problems, like sticky wheels and a few new ones too, like dead cell phones. Away uses high-quality materials while offering a much lower price compared to other brands by cutting out the middleman and selling directly to you. You get to choose from a variety of colors and four sizes, the carry-on, the bigger carry-on, the medium, or the large for extended stays. I chose the carry-on in black. All suitcases are made with premium German polycarbonate, unrivaled in strength and impact resistance, and it's very lightweight. The interior features a patent-pending compression system, which is helpful for overpackers. I tend to have to pack a bunch of stuff, and it's very helpful for me. I also like that I can slide some of my toiletries in the little thingy. Uh, Four 360-degree spinner wheels that guarantee a smooth ride, TSA-approved combination lock built into the top of the bag to prevent theft, and a removable, washable laundry bag keeps dirty clothes separate from clean. I really love using that laundry bag because now I don't have to steal the plastic laundry bag out of the closet of the hotel that I'm staying in. I always have a laundry bag with me, and it fits everything that I need. And it snaps in so I don't lose it. Both sizes of the carry-on are able to charge all cell phones, tablets, e-readers, and anything else that's powered by a USB cord. I like to use mine to charge my headphones whenever I carry chargeable headphones, which is very nice. A single charge of the Away carry-on will charge your iPhone five times. I can attest to this, it definitely does. It has a lifetime warranty. If anything breaks, we will fix or replace it for you for life. And you get a 100-day trial to live with it, vibe with it, travel with it, Instagram it. If at any point you decide it's not for you, return it for a full refund, no questions asked. You get free shipping on any away order within the lower 48 states and carry-on sizes that are compliant with all major U.S. airlines while maximizing the amount you can pack. And if you're in town, please be sure to visit away at their retail store in New York City. So, to get $20 off, and away suitcase. Visit awaytravel.com slash baseball and use promo code baseball during checkout. That's $20 off your first suitcase, and it will be your first. You'll get another one, I guarantee you. Visit awaytravel.com slash baseball and use promo code baseball during checkout. This How is long, a, I'm sorry. No, 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 go uh, ahead. Rhea, shut up. Yeah, yeah. How long had it been since you had seen this movie? I was trying to remember. Mm. It's been a minute. I feel like five or six years probably mm-hmm. i watched it the, the last time i watched it was last year it was mm-hmm. after baseball season ended yes and i just wanted some baseball i wanted some baseball i, ro- yep. I watched this i watched eight men out yep i watched ken burns baseball yep was there another one there might have been another baseball movie in there a league of their own no i haven't seen that in a long time oh paul i'm due for that yeah you're due yeah <laughs> you're due <laughs> it's on mlb network all the time do you have mlb mlb network i your... do but i never think to look for things there <laughs> yeah they play movies all uh, like during the off season right. in the mornings right. it's just like men and hot women screaming about trades and then right. all afternoons it's just like <laughs> movies do they show them with commercials yeah oh well fuck that i know i will fuck yeah. that also, it's kind of fun sometimes to watch them with commercials because it reminds you of the olden days. If yes, if but not if for you happen something upon you haven't a movie, seen in a long yes, time. Yes, not something you're planning on watching. Yes. If you happen upon a movie on a channel that shows it with commercials, absolutely for sure. Yes, but yeah. no. Something else. Yes, but no. <laughs> yes, but no. <laughs> yes, but no. <laughs> um, yeah, I would. You know, it's uh, probably a big surprise to you that I would recommend watching a league of their own. But yes, it is a it's a great movie. No, I've been I've been. Because we've talked about it a great deal and, and I haven't, you know, it's come up a conversation a great deal yep. and I've been thinking about watching it and I just haven't uh, sought it out yet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, RIP Penny Marshall. Yeah. Worth a watch. That also reminds me of something that we were just talking about, too, that I sort of noticed post movie, which is that and this is including background. I don't think that I saw a single person of color in this yeah. entire movie, yeah. which is not the case of A League of Their Own specifically, because these are almost, in terms of the time that they're supposed to be, mm-hmm. A League of Their Own is supposed to be 1943, and this is 1939. And obviously, I'm not referring to the field because it wasn't integrated then. However, there's like nobody in background shots or anything. No. It's like a pure white movie. Yeah. <laughs> which pure is white movie. kind of shocking. Yeah. 
Because, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. My eyes have just been trained to look at all of that yeah. for like a bunch of years. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. there's like a lot of people of color in the uh, audience or, or fan scenes in A League of Their Own. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the, the scene that but, Penny tries to do the nod to the fact that black women were allowed in the league. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was kind of, I mean, it's shocking, but it's also not shocking to watch a movie like this and then be like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. From this movie, it was made in 84. Yep. And, and it's a period piece, but that's no, that does, yeah, you know, right. black people existed then. Yep. They definitely were <laughs> walking around. All kinds of people <laughs> existed then. Kind, there's trains and there's yeah. uh, scenes where there's like people just in public. So yeah, yeah definitely there would be a black person at least. Not even like in a, in a, in a, in a <laughs> what is this? A CBS like a, newsroom? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that dude who tweeted like, well, d maybe it's not that CBS is racist, oh, but that yeah. black people aren't that interested in journalism. Right, yeah. <laughs> black people are culturally not interested in journalism. Yeah, exactly. It's not like CBS is the KKK. I love how anybody pointing out like, hey, this is racist is somebody saying, this is the KKK. But then when it clearly is the KKK, people are like, this is definitely not the KKK. Do you know what else? Honestly, <laughs> what's, what's also really telling is the, and I'm I'm sure you could, I'm, I'm sure that people said that CBS was racist for this. But the things that I saw addressing it weren't even saying CBS right, was, was racist. Yep. They're saying you couldn't put yep, right. at least one, you know, black journalist on here when that's a, a really important part of the of the voting public, <laughs> yeah. especially in this in this upcoming election. Nobody's even nobody that yes. I saw was even saying right. you guys are racist for doing this. Right. Yes. Yeah, it's the people <laughs> defending CBS that are saying Oh, Other so people are saying it. <laughs> I mean, actually, yes, but that's besides the point. <laughs> that's a whole other. That's a whole other thing yeah. that we're not actually talking about yeah. yet. Um, <laughs> but back to the natural. <laughs> um, something that I had known for a long time, but looked up while we were watching this, which is that uh, this is the movie that Jim Tomey, someone who played for both of our teams that are dear, near and dear to our hearts. Yeah. I feel like we both have spots for Mr. Jim. Absolutely. Um, this is where he got his batting stance. Really? Yes. And from this movie? From this movie. And the story is, and he got it from Charlie Manuel, who was the manager of the Phillies, but also worked in the Cleveland organization. Mm -hmm. So when they were both in the minors and they were playing in a Philly, playing in Philly against a Philadelphia affiliate. Sorry, that was a tough one. <laughs> they were all watching the natural in the locker room and Charlie Manuel wouldn't let them watch TV after a certain point. Right. Like wanted to get them focused. And they were like, <laughs> I just imagine a bunch of like grown men being like, oh, come on, coach, <laughs> yeah. let us finish the natural. But he was watching it going oh, like, TV. okay, you can finish it. But this is, this is, he says, this is your load f from now on, which is like how, you know, you set up your stance. So basically it was like, Jim, this is how you're going to hit now. Cause he was like too still. Wow. With his, his stance, he was like mm -hmm. from nothing to hitting. And I, he hit two home runs <laughs> after he changed wow. it to that, to what Robert Redford is doing in a movie. That's amazing. And I always thought it was the, because Jim used to do the, the right hand pointing out, which mm -hmm. I do think he takes from the beginning when the whammer, who's clearly <laughs> supposed to be Babe Ruth, uh, when the whammer is like pointing to the outfield in, in yeah. their little bet that they have going on, which is not what Roy does. But he, he got the other stuff, like his mm -hmm. hip movement and his like wiggles and stuff, which I... Thanks, Merv. Uh, I think that Redford looks really good as a baseball player. He really player. does. You buy it. You totally buy it. A hundred percent. And I think the baseball looks really great in this yeah. movie, too. And there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could always go for a little more yeah. just because I like to see it on film. It's like just a beautiful thing. Yeah. But I think the the baseball in this looks really great. I feel like including it, the errors. Yes. Yeah. The errors <laughs> are like real. super goofy. Yeah. 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 Um. I will say, you know, there's no section of this movie where tequila is playing and they're making really great trick plays and stuff. Right. <laughs> Some type of tequila-esque sort of a song. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of all that it's missing. What would it um, have been back then? Yes, we have no bananas? Like <laughs> sure. Yeah, that sounds like it. Um, the Charleston? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. The Charleston. The tequila Just of the, its day. The tequila of its day. <laughs> I loved seeing them turn a double play. Yeah. I want to, these, the background guys playing baseball have got to be just baseball players that they cast because it's shot far enough away. Right. Because I feel like in Bull Durham, it's actors that have baseball capability, which is most movies, but this one really seems like baseball players. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> Murph is getting real active. I figured as soon as we started recording, he would be like, it's my time to get up and move <laughs> around. 
Oh, what? Oh, what? no. He's being very nice He's to me now. He's being very sweet. Murph, I know. earlier. He did. He hauled off. He never did that before. I'm sorry. Merv is very, for people who don't know, yeah. he's very protective. Thanks for this PSA. Yes. He's very protective. Yes. This is his domain. It's definitely his domain. You're his charge. I am his he's charge. He's not going to yes. let anything happen to you. No, no, no. Not at all. And so- He's well, very say, that lady from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Let's say, uh, you know, somebody, uh, he meets somebody and he gets to know them and then they go up, uh, get up to go mm-hmm. to the bathroom. When they come back, how does he know that they're the same person? He doesn't know. <laughs> He How doesn't he, know at all. Here's what here's what he doesn't know. He doesn't know if intentions have changed. <laughs> yes, exactly. He wants to know what business you have now. Yeah. <laughs> after you've just done your business. I've seen you in here <laughs> as as this that you know, you've gone, you've come back. <laughs> what are you up to what now? What are you up to now? He's a good guy. He's a very good guy. He's, He's good very guy. small. He's got his job to do. Gets confused That's right. sometimes. <laughs> all right, take it. <laughs> He's these. he's had like a bark collar on for a couple months now. And it has, I think it's worked. Yeah. He's different a little bit. He's different. <laughs> he is different. He Do barks a lot less. you think he blames me for the bark collar? He does. I, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, Paul, it's your fault. Well, I can accuse you. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I feed him. <laughs> I pick up his poop with my hands. He's your best friend. And there's a bag on my hands, but still. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what? Well, you came in your New York Knights hat. Yes. Thank How, you, Ebbets Field. Yes. How do you feel about the costumes in this film i love those old baseball uniforms oh they're so good they can like what's funny is i love them in film because when you yes. see them in like archive footage mm-hmm. it looks dumb <laughs> they're gigantic <laughs> they're gigantic. They're so big i don't know how they played in those yeah, things so they clearly have made an adjustment to, sure yeah like obviously they they probably started with authentic really authentic stuff and they're like everyone looks like shit we gotta <laughs> can we t- tuck these in a little they all bit look like they're 800 pounds yeah, exactly <laughs> i think that i think the uniforms look great and all the all the period clothing when they're when they're off the field mm-hmm. looks terrific redford yep. looks his his wardrobe in this movie throughout is terrific. so great yeah and it's like a nice little journey too, where he's yeah. like making a little bit of money or becoming more professional or whatever and starts yeah. to wear like starting off with that bomber jacket is so wonderful. Yeah. That absolutely. really does look like a painting, that opening frame oh, of the it's, it's so gorgeous. Good. And it's like his his one ankle bent, you yep. know, because he's been there for a while. Yeah. You know, just like oh it's it's, it's there's yeah. so many great little details in this movie. It's it's really it, you know you I hate saying they don't make them like that anymore but it you know we were talking about this that you know a mainstream movie like this now mm-hmm. um would be so stupid you know it would be so dumbed yeah. down and it just wouldn't I don't know I, I I find it hard to think of a mainstream movie like this in recent years that um takes its time like this mm-hmm. and is uh, written uh, to the top of its intelligence mm-hmm. without being like, you know, impenetrable. It's it's really, it's very accessible, but it's yeah. really smart. You it's know? artistic, but it's not like arty. Yeah. To the point where you're like, I don't know what's really happening anymore. Like people yeah. are actually talking to each other. Some of it seems like actual banter that the yeah. actors came up with <laughs> the love in, story, in a couple scenes. Yeah, you know? the, the love story aspect of it is extremely subtle Mm -hmm. and extremely downplayed it's not for sure it's not made the main focus of the movie at all that you know it's it really is this guy's story you said it's the as you said it's the odyssey and and it's 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 not like they think you know i i think that a lot of times this movie's you know executives you know big studio movies they're thinking no oh, people are going to get bored if it's not if yep. we don't have this mm-hmm. and there's no real sex scene in this movie you know what i mean like no, there's, there's not. barely love scenes yeah. you know there's barely kissing in it you yeah. know it's it's a very i mean <laughs> it's a very he, chaste movie in a way <laughs> i'm i'm there's a spoiler alert at the beginning of this thing that i'm going to record so it does i mean clearly he has sex with Glenn Close cuz yeah. they have a child together yeah. but you never see it yeah. you just all you have is how much, how in love they are with each other, yeah. and the fact that they grew up together, they've known each other. She has like the sort of uh, Mary crush on George kind of a thing from yeah. It's a Wonderful Life, and like it's just there mm-hmm. in a way that it is in a life, yeah. you know. <laughs> like it's not, um, and even the Kim Basinger stuff is very simple. Like it's not, yeah. uh, it doesn't feel overwrought, and like, yeah, it. Um, I like that it takes its time yeah. and you spend a lot of time in the places that they're in. There's scenes where you're just watching people walking in shadow. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. It's so it's so well done. I I, I and Glenn I want to talk about Glenn Close's role in this because mm-hmm. it's it's a relatively small role. It's a relatively thankless role, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. It's 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 common to movie you know there's 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 a lot of movies that I like that unfortunately uh, that are great movies that don't know what to do with women. Yes. They just don't know what to do with them. Yep. And this is a very thankless role of like, you're just there to be a sort of inspiration. You're there to be, you know, um, a, a prize to be earned, you know, by mm-hmm. this guy's redemption. You know, when he, you're, you're patiently waiting for him to figure out his shit so that he can be worthy of you again, you right. know, because you are a good, decent, profoundly, uh, 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 wonderful person who is, who, who is so good that you see the good in this <laughs> other person. Yeah, right. And you're and like, you have- haven't seen just, for 16 years yeah exactly exactly <laughs> and you know it's it's she does with it i mean this this type of movie i think gives her uh you know some decent stuff to play but it really is a tribute to her acting ability absolutely that she makes it into something i think she made a, a role that wasn't there essentially i totally you know agree. what i mean oh oh yes yeah because everything you're saying i'm realizing Basically, the Barbara Hershey thing, which is like the description of this movie is, uh, you know, inspiring fable of a baseball player's major league dreams and the mysterious woman who shatters them, yeah. which is like, which woman are you talking? Number one, which woman are you talking about? There's three yeah, women exactly. in this movie. It could be from that description. But out, out of all of them, she could have just been this person pining away and waiting. But like she has so much in such a small role she has so much agency or she plays yeah. it with a lot of agency yes yeah, she does like like when she gets in the cab and he's like come come tomorrow and she's yeah. like i can't yeah i mean she ends up coming anyways because she's in love with him <laughs> yeah and like you know but it's it's nice that that's the ending that yeah. she's like i i can't do that and it's not she's not like fighting with herself she's like i have a life i have to work and he's yeah. like oh you have you work and she's you know whatever like just that tiny thing could yeah. be so different if it was somebody else. The scene, in, the scene in the hospital. You know mm-hmm. when she comes to visit him, she communicates so much wordlessly. I, I think that's a great scene, by the way, between the yes. two of them, um, where it's you know it's two people that have that knew each other in youth and still have a connection, and they're they're sort of acknowledging. There's a lot that's 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 said without being spelled out. That we're both older now. We we know so much more of the world now than we knew, mm-hmm. and so there's a there's a, a, a an apology that isn't said, and there's a forgiveness that isn't said. Mm-hmm. Um, that that to me, what it seems like that's what transpired in that scene mm-hmm. of like, uh, I know that I fucked up, and and the other person saying, yeah, I know that you did, and, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. but you were young, and you know, we're we're here now, you mm-hmm. know, yep. let's 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 like put that in the past and and let's let's start from here and let's start here and move on from from this moment you know as opposed Mm -hmm. to dredging up that shit like what possibly can we say to each other after all this time (laughs) you know yeah yeah it's it's which i don't think would even be in a movie anymore no you'd have to it would everything would would be be so spelled out yeah it yeah it's a thing that bugs me about romantic comedies and it, romantic comedies are not my genre. Some people, it's their genre. Mm-hmm. The thing that bugs me about every romantic comedy is the time that the couple has to spend apart because they, oh, yeah. because of the dumb misunderstanding. With sad music or the, and montage and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. does this still have to be in there? <laughs> like, I, I feel know like now people put it in because like it's a joke, but it's like, I don't, you don't need to make the joke. Yeah. The joke has been made. I, I feel it doesn't like, need to be in there anymore. Yeah, I feel like it's so it's so part of the formula that nobody wants to fuck with it. But does anybody enjoy that part? I I don't at all. Like, I much prefer a movie a like this and... where there's other shit, like that. <laughs> like the whole movie exactly. is the montage. Yeah. of their lives. Yeah, have. Yeah, it's yeah. just we only see one because yeah. it's about a baseball player. Yeah. Oh, I also crazy. when he first uh, gets on the team and Pop is like giving him that hard time. I kept thinking like. Oh, this is what it's like to be like a woman. Because <laughs> uh-huh. he's just like, I mean, he's giving him a hard time because he's like old and yeah, because uh, Robert Redford Roy is is old, but also Pop is old and he's yeah. like sick of everything. But it's also like what it's like to be X Y Z, you know, yeah, the the one or whatever. I've been told to accept you here, but that doesn't mean but I'm going to like yeah, it exactly, and I'm not going to be any help. And I don't give a shit how good you are. Yeah, I'm going to give you a hard time 
just because I want to. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. How do you feel about uh, the bat, Wonder Boy? <laughs> also, before we get into the bat, I do want to say like how funny this movie actually is, like subtly funny it is mm-hmm. throughout. And a lot of it, I feel like, relies on the editing. You yeah, know? Like, absolutely. I love the cut to, uh, there's so many cut to's a scoreboard or like, Somebody getting a hit right after something and like the patches, you know, yeah. like him saying. And oh, then, and people disappearing. Like yo, yeah. The, the, uh, all the all the insert shots of the fans yep. at the game, which is, I got to say, there are so many shots of the fans that I can't believe how well these people who are, you know, they're, they're extras, essentially, like featured extras. Yeah. They are able to communicate, not that not only that they are invested in the game, but I feel like they're able to communicate the length of time that the game has taken <laughs> sure, up yeah. to that point. Like right. it's 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 amazing that oh, yeah. just these really, really quick cuts that's like, yeah, that guy is communicating absolutely the yep. drama of this game. Oh, yeah. He's been there all night. And yeah, it, yeah. You know, it's like it's really a feat. Yeah, they clearly spent a lot of time on those reactions. Yes. Also, yeah. like in Bull Durham, there's a lot of shots where you're like, that that's not the same and you you have to do that sometimes, but yeah. there's a lot of shots in Bull Durham that's like, oh, this is like day for night. You're like sneaking in an overcast yeah. shot or whatever. And that takes me out of stuff so quickly. Yeah. And I know you've got to use what you've got to use, but they clearly like cared yeah. to get every reaction for every and also I I was marveling at how well they did with Buffalo as basically their only location. Mm-hmm. And this entire movie played for well, they used New York, but played for Chicago and New York. Yeah. Uh, the Wrigley Field was not very accurate. That's okay. <laughs> you can't get into Wrigley Field in 1984. I get it. I yeah. understand. Uh, but it still looked good. And I mean, they used the Cubs uniforms, which is also pretty wild. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they had the Cubs and the Pirates. Those are the only two teams that you actually really see. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's what the Pirates actually look. I feel they must have. But there were other fake teams. You do see Philadelphia. Do you? Which I oh, think yes. Was you're right. You're right. Yep. I mm-hmm. think that might have been a fake team. Um, yeah, they wouldn't have been the Phillies then. They would have been no, the-, the Stars or the uh, Athletics. Yeah, I'm not stars sure. Stars were the Negro League team. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, maybe athletics. the Athletics. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I liked all of that. Um, Wonder Boy, what do you think about it? I, I, it's such a great detail. <laughs> yeah. The, when the, the actual thing with the lightning hits the tree, it's, it's so dramatic. It's, it's so insane. dramatic. But the also great, great effects how they get the like glowing ember. Oh yeah, it's still it's beautiful. And it's, yeah, it's I mean beautiful. it's so over the top. Yeah, and I feel like when I was first coming to this movie, I was like too young because it was too slow, mm-hmm. and you know I was seeing movies like Bull Durham or which I shouldn't have I seen. Play pong. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want to. I want. <laughs> did you say Pogs or Pong? Uh, what did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> I heard both. <laughs> I heard Yanny and the other thing. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> when that was happening, I listened to it yeah. right, and I heard I heard Laurel every oh, yeah. time, but one time <laughs> in the middle there, I yeah. heard Yanny, and it freaked me out. <laughs> I just I felt like that thing was some sort of like mind control that they were like. I really oh, loved it I creepy. loved the dress because I thought yeah. it was a pretty fascinating. Like we were all participating in a scientific experiment yeah. in real time, right. which was pretty cool because I was at <laughs> someone's house sitting on a couch like we are right now. Right. And I was like, everybody's seeing this dress is gold and white. And my friend was like, what the fuck? <laughs> it is gold and white. And we were sitting next to each other <laughs> having the opposite experiences. <laughs> just going like, what are you talking about? Like having that. Yeah. Anyway, I can't remember which color I saw now. <laughs> I was blue and black the whole time. I can't remember. The blue. whole... I, I never saw a golden white. Because now I can see them both in my mind. Of course, I can't yeah. The, I feel you like can I'm, see the BuzzFeed article. Yeah, about. I'm looking at it side by side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'll go with Pogs. <laughs> I just got a slammer. I said Pogs. Gifted to me. Um, but I did play Pong in my day. I just never owned an Atari. Um, but I was seeing movies like Rookie of the Year mm-hmm. and Bull Durham. Um, Which one is Rookie of the Year again? That's the Henry Rowan Gardner... Uh, like falls on his arm and then he yes, pitches for the yes, Cubs. Yes, that's right. He can, you know, funky butt loving, that's that right. whole thing. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, I think I saw that like in the theater. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like just goofier, more kid-like stuff. Right, and so right, I didn't right. have the attention for this. I forget what my original thing was. I went off on that whole Yanny and Laurel. Um, I don't even know. There was, <laughs> there was a whole fault. point. No, 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 not your you. fault. I feel like this was enjoyable and people <laughs> like it. 
Um, I don't know where I was going with it. I literally don't. I lost the thread and I can't, I'm, you know, I don't know. I can't rewind. So we may get back there. Yeah, we, we might. We were there. talking about we were Wonder talking Boy. About editing. And, we were talking about it being funny. We were talking about. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't. It was something really subtle that I was going to bring up. So it probably wasn't even worth it. I will say those Knights jackets look really great. They look terrific. And you can get one on Ebbets. Yeah. You can get all the Knights stuff on Ebbets. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. have such a weird feeling about wearing anything New York. Being like a Cleveland really? fan. Even yeah. a fake team. Even a fake team. <laughs> but I will say my high school mascot was the Knights, so I feel all right wearing a, yeah. a Knights Letterman jacket. Absolutely. If you can get one that just says Knights, and if it doesn't have the NY on it. Right, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I love that. I love the lightning bolt, but it's like, it's just, it's just weird to, it's, for me, strange to claim New York. We were talking about the bat. Yes. Yeah. Was that it? That was it. And I was, yeah, we were just that talking about it. the bat. Yeah. I thought, I thought we were talking about the, the tree hitting yep. the thing. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I, I love the detail of the bat that he, he, you know, is this kid, he makes it himself and that he's kept it mm-hmm. all this time. Yep. Um, In like a trumpet case. Yeah. Or something. Exactly. Like they never really they zoom never in, really, but. Yeah. It seems to have a case specifically for a baseball a bat. Trumpet, yeah. Which I don't think exists. Uh, not like that. No, not back then. <laughs> yeah. I don't think. I'm sure somebody definitely makes them now because right. everybody makes For everything. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I think I'm going to try to make a bat this year. Are you really? Yeah. There's like a community wood shop that has mm-hmm. like a large um, commercial size lathe and there's somebody that already makes baseball bats there. There you go. So, How many bats do you currently doing? own? Uh, I have three. Do you have a favorite? Uh, I have one that I use regularly. And one that I haven't used at all that just is like ready. Mm-hmm. And then um, my other one, I don't really like at all. Why is that? Uh, I just, I never hit with it. I mm-hmm. never hit well with it. I, it's something about like the weight. Mm-hmm. But um, the one that I use all the time is also kind of difficult to hit with because it has, I don't know all the specifications of everything, but it has mm-hmm. like a very intense drop to it. So mm-hmm. like the, the, what would you even say? The shape of the barrel and mm-hmm. how it goes from, thin to thick is like very intense so it doesn't have a huge like barrel space to hit the ball with but Mm. when you do barrel it you really hit the ball really far (laughs) and uh that's real fun when that happens um i did we had like batting practice recently and i I didn't get a ton of hits but the couple that i did um it was just like a couple people from my league and i got like one really good hit that everybody went oh (laughs) which is a fun one when some you know (laughs) You just crank it and everybody has an emotional guttural reaction to it. When you make your bat, what are you going to burn into it? What am I going to burn? That's a great, I'm going to have to think about that. Yeah. That's, that's good. Once it's in there, it's in there. Once it's in there, it's in there. Uh, It's, yeah. I also loved how when he's, you know, he starts hitting at batting practice and Wilford Bradley's first reaction is, let me see that bat. (laughs) Yeah, right. Um, And they look at the bat and he asks about (laughs) Wonder Boy and there, and Robert Redford has to play a thing that's like, it's, I'm a little embarrassed, but I'm also not embarrassed. Also, did you see what I just did? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. I stand yeah. by, I stand by little kid me yep. for putting that on that bat. You yeah. Know. He's like, he acknowledges, I, I made it when I was a kid. Yep. Okay. So happy. It's good bat though. So I put Wonder Boy on there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> it's not that terrible. But it's a good bat. I made it. It's not like it says Darkwing Duck or some yeah, shit on it. Darkwing <laughs> Duck. Led, Ze- Led Zeppelin or Def ah! Leppard. um yeah i love the ending of this movie yeah i almost cried i definitely almost cry i mean the 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 end of that game where he hits the ball into the lights Mm -hmm. the that is just iconic footage of him running the bases with the sparks like he's he's um you know uh uh he's backlit and and just the shower sparks raining down um and they i love that it's it's all of the bases. All of like them. He, he all touches of them. them all. Um, <laughs> I love... And then wh- that extremely... Whoever, what, yeah. Well, I just leading into it, I love that whoever it is on first base is like, come on, Roy, one time. Yeah. It's like such a thing people say yeah. to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that very brief, extremely brief coda at the end, which is like, <laughs> oh, this yeah. is all you need to know. Yeah. Here it is. Yeah. You know? And it's like, I feel like in, in a modern movie that would be dragged the oh, fuck yeah. out. There would be you know? like a monologue over it. There'd be, talking. Yes, there I mean, be you, First, there would be some dumb dialogue. There would be dumb then dialogue. Then there'd be a monologue. <laughs> then, there'd be a, yeah. then they would kiss. And there'd be some yeah. song that then they're trying to get die to, and, to, yeah. to win an Oscar. Right, Lady Gaga someone starts singing. <laughs> yeah. 
like Wilford Brimley has a heart attack or some shit like that. I mean, yeah. I love the shot of it reflected in his glasses. Like he just got what he was saying. That's yeah. all he wants, which That's right. I do have a problem as a person who plays baseball with someone being satisfied with only getting the pennant. Literally no one feels that way. However, However it fits the movie. You could also say he's saying that because of a superstition. So he sure, won't yeah. allow himself right. to Good talk point. about the series. Because we never find out if yeah. they won the World Series So it's like Because it doesn't asking, matter. Yeah, I'm yeah. only asking for the pennant. That's I, all look, I'm asking yes, for. Yes, I agree with you, Paul. Now because in, it's in, also the same in uh, Major League. I mean, Major yeah. League is like they don't even win anything. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah. finish the the season. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, right. that's it. They just, so they could take all the pieces of clothing off of that cardboard cutout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what you do with women. No matter how shitty they are. That's right. Did you know that that movie had an alternate ending, which was that she was on their side and the audiences were like, nah, we don't like it. Uh, so they changed uh, it. Uh, <laughs> Make her terrible. I oh, remember awful. so little of that movie. I rem Here's what I remember. Charlie Sheen gets glasses. Yep. I remember there's a voodoo guy. There's a voodoo guy. <laughs> Very racist <laughs> caricature. Right. Wait, played by somebody who became... It's Dennis Hays... Has Dennis Haysburg. Haysburg. It's the right. president of the United States, De right. Dennis Haysburg. Yeah. It's pretty good. I mean, uh, what's his name? I was just looking at his goddamn Tom name. Tom Berenger? N uh, no, the other one that looks just like him. That was in a, uh, that was on LA Law. Oh, William Peterson. Nope. Corbin Burnson? Corbin Burnson. <laughs> I was in a audition waiting to do for for an audition that I mm. obviously did not get at all. Um, and Corbin Burnson was in there and I was like, holy shit, Dorn is in here. Because <laughs> that's his character's name in Major League. And then I saw him in Highland Park too. I... One of these Christmases, as Third time's the charm. I'm gonna make a Christmas <laughs> dornament and put that on my oh, tree if I ever get a tree again. Um, anyway, I I do love the end of this movie because he gets all of the things. Yeah. By realizing what's important. Yeah. You know, he wasn't in it for the money to begin with, mm -hmm. but the hubris of wanting people to, um, you know, say he was the greatest. And uh, Glenn Close is like, just think of all all that you've already done. Yeah. It's such a great, oh, it's <laughs> just such a great way of thinking about like anything, yeah. really, not yeah. just baseball, but Absolutely. like literally anything. Like sometimes you do have to be like, what do I need to do better? Yeah. But it's also great to be like, look at what I've already done. I never caught the, that line before that she says in the hospital. Um, and I, this is probably my fourth viewing of this movie mm -hmm. and, and uh, most recent being last year. Um the the thing about you have two lives you have the yeah. the life you learn with and then the life you live after that mm -hmm. um is that's not a bad line of dialogue no nope. that's really pretty good she also really nails it yeah she does just yeah i mean she's glenn close we yeah, all know this does. but sometimes you forget because you think about you know yeah. fatal attraction and all that other yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. or she's stuff terrific. recent stuff that she's really tremendous in but like this is i mean like you said it's such a tiny role but she does so much with it yeah and then him getting to basically be his dad or do what his dad didn't get to do is yeah. like such a great, it's a great movie. It's lovely. It's a lovely it's film. It's a great movie. Yeah, it I really liked is. It, it, it was really a pleasure is. watching it with you, Paul. It was a pleasure watching it with you too. I'm glad Base it's buddies. Out. Yeah. Are we going <laughs> to go? Buddies 2019. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Are we going to go watch some gymnastics? I was trying to think Let's of a, do it. a friendship uh, pun for that, I'd <laughs> but I can't think of one. <laughs> Fantastics. Fantastics. Yeah. We saw that video of that uh I I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. that UCLA uh, young UCLA gymnast doing this routine and it was so much fun. Yeah. I mean she and I think I I've think never it seen was college open... gymnastics before, but apparently that's they're allowed to have fun. And yeah, look yeah. Like it's fun. been changing. I've actually been sort of watching gymnastics over uh -huh. the past couple of years and the, those r floor routines have mm -hmm. been where like a lot of changes because it's dance too. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Somebody on Twitter <laughs> was talking about how uh, it breaks the form. Not only does she like get, you know, tens across the board because the music is like so artistically chosen as yeah. well. There's yeah, no yeah, yeah. one thing all through. There's like moments of silence in it, which yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a floor routine like that yeah. where there's like cuts of nothing. Yeah. But like her, the control she has and obviously she's a gymnast. She's supposed to. But sometimes people just have it yeah. in a way that you're like, oh, I've, I've literally never seen that before. And she does crazy stuff. Crazy shit. Crazy I mean, stuff. I couldn't imagine seeing that. In, like, I couldn't believe it on my phone. Yeah. Could you imagine seeing that person that high in the air? Oh. From I, like, I mean, the thing, there's springs under that thing. But yeah. it's still a floor. I mean, <laughs> gymnastics already is impressive. Like, I, oh, yeah. my only experience have been the Olympics. You know what I mean? Yep. And already 
I I would marvel at the stuff that that these women are able to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was like, oh, and you could incorporate and this it's like stuff. fun and shit. <laughs> yeah. I you also smile. Yes, I love watching college gymnastics because of everybody on the team is so is like so supportive of each other because yeah. that's not really. Ha- I mean, on the Olympics they're supportive of each other, but to a point because it's not it's not the same thing. There's not like decorum. This at, is like yeah. absolutely, and they're like yeah, you know, they've been doing this for four or five years together, yeah. and they're like everybody's doing her routine in the background it's, and shit it's, it's like this video is so good yeah if you yeah, haven't seen it find it it's on both of our twitters <laughs> yeah uh and you should watch that and we should definitely go because we go. i've never seen live gymnastics period me and neither if we have that basically in our neighborhood yeah then we need to go see it. absolutely <laughs> uh also uh wmba yes yeah i'd yeah. like to go to some games let's go to some I've sparks games it's real fun. Yeah, that's, the, uh, that's what I've heard. You work the whole time. They don't give you a moment's rest. <laughs> I'm serious. The, whole, the game has a DJ. You work the whole you time. You work the whole time. There's dancing and stuff to be paying attention to the whole time. Now, if they ask for a response, do they sometimes have trouble hearing you? Sometimes. Occasionally. It depends on where you're sitting. Right. And they ask you to maybe do it again but louder a little bit louder yeah Yeah, they do and have i told you my favorite thing that happens at sparks games i don't know it's the vivica a fox uh wig out wig cam (laughs) (laughs) so you gotta get ready for that yeah yeah they find you with a wig and then your face is inside the wig and they're like all right it's time to wig out it's the Vivica A. Fox why, wig out why wig cam. Why the Vivica A. Fox wig Because cam. Vivica A. Fox has a wig company, and that wig company, the Vivica A. Fox wig company, is a proud sponsor of the Los Angeles Sparks. I was not prepared for this answer. <laughs> I, I can see in your face that you are not at all. <laughs> I did not know. Shout out to Vivica A. Fox and her yep. wig company. I had no Shout idea. Shout out. Kill Bill. <laughs> in front of a batch elder fireplace. <laughs> Never forget. Never forget. <laughs> Paul F. Tompkins, it was wonderful talking uh, the natural and other baseball movies with you, obviously. Absolutely um, my pleasure. I can't wait for the season to start. Me it's too. It's going to be real exciting. Yeah. It's going to be real fun. A bunch of teams are going to feel unrecognizable this That's, year. I know. I know. As of this recording, Bryce Harper still unsigned? Still unsigned, yes. Yeah. A- and Manny Machado. Ugh. And the Phillies are in on both of them. I hope he gets I feel, signed by I, hell. I feel both ways about <laughs> Manny Machado. I think he made a lot of mistakes. And it makes sense that people are like hesitant, but I feel like they're going a lot harder on him than they really need to. Well, he's I a jerk. get, I, yeah, he is a jerk. <laughs> he's not, people, are, yeah, I mean, I just can't imagine. Like, how did he not realize? Like, oh, I should probably, if I want to make a lot of money, yeah, I should probably exactly. like try to hustle it out or whatever. I, I should, I don't, if I'm going to be a jerk, <laughs> I should at least hustle. I should at least hustle it yes. out in the World Series. It's yeah. the World Series. You <laughs> That's can't, all. because because you it needs to be. He's a jerk, but but yes, exactly. <laughs> it shouldn't be. He's a jerk, and <laughs> yes, because a lot of people uh, brought up uh, Chase Utley, yeah. and like, yeah, no, I get it. He like broke a guy's leg. He yeah. also broke a guy's leg doing a thing that has been in baseball forever. That mm-hmm. is now not in baseball, right? And uh, he hustled out every ball. Here's what he I will just say. really he just did. If I may say and, this in defense of Chase Utley, yes. which is this is predictable because. Uh, he was, uh, you know, with the Phillies when this when this happened. Um, he yes, he broke that guy's leg, <laughs> but he wasn't a jerk about it. <laughs> exactly, Paul. <laughs> it's been wonderful talking to you. <laughs> so great, perfect. <laughs> This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.